Great. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to um, the communications room to talk about the communications portion of Maple. Again, I'm Ricarda Erickson, and I would love for um, the other commission members in the room to just introduce themselves. Um, let me starting with Ned. DEC regional floodplain manager, so I'm involved in a lot of flood remediation. Thanks, Ned. I'm James Ray. And I'm Paul Carnahan. Nice to see you. Great. And so we have people um, zooming in, and Ned is monitoring that, as well as Orca, and, um, and then we have Paul taking notes. Um, so just wanted to, to, before we open it up to everyone, is just to think about a few um, kind of group agreements here. And one is um, we've got a nice size group, so this I think will not be as much of an issue, but to make space, take space. This is an opportunity for the commission members to live. Um, we want to hear from you. So we're not going to do a lot of talking, and um, we'd like for you all to to take, take your turn to give us some feedback and um, to also make space for others to, to give feedback as well. So we'll limit um, comments to about two minutes and want to make sure we get an opportunity to hear from everyone um, before um, you speak again. And, um, and Ned's going to help me make sure that the Zoom folks can, um, can get their voice in as well. Um, and so, the, and the other piece is we're really looking for your thoughts. There are no bad thoughts on the, the plan that we've put together. We would like your ideas to stick to the plan specifically. You don't have to have read it, but um, maybe if you haven't read it yet, give, have, give the chance for other folks to ask their questions first so you can orient yourself a little bit to, to the plan. And um, also, let's focus on um, your feedback doesn't have to relate to the person before you. It doesn't, we don't need this to be a debate, but more just hearing, hearing all your ideas. All right. So with that, um, we've got the, hopefully you all, um, either heard from Derek Libby or um, Katie Trouts with the, um, uh, the too long didn't read version of, of the plan and um, honed in on the communications portion. Um, but at this point, would love to just open it up to your thoughts, your questions, um, ideas about what might be missing from this, what you're wondering about. Um, really, this is, this is your time to provide your feedback. So um, you can raise hands um, and just go around. Ned? <laughs> Evelyn, would you talk about the handout you gave me at the door? Yes. Um, so I don't have it with me, um, but first I'll introduce myself. Hi, Thank I'm you. Evelyn Prim. I'm the communications coordinator for the city. Um, I'm, I'm actually in the plan. Um, and uh, so we, the city has been trying really hard to um, get the tangible material that makes sense to people about this plan to, to our community members. And so one of the ways that we did that is we put together a, uh, a little handout. Um, it's on the table out there. It's uh, the flood level guide. Fantastic, show and tell. Um, so that's it. And this uh, describes the uh, US Geological Services data on the river gauge at um, the Winooski. So when we say if there's a flood, for instance, um, in, that's expected, we say it's going to, the, the National Weather Service expects the river to crest at 16 feet. What the heck does that mean? Um, before I had to learn all of that to do my job, it meant nothing to me. I don't know where 16 feet um, went. But the National Weather Service and USGS has done a really great job of updating their mapping system and communicating what that actually means to the different locations. And so what we did is we took that information and we put it into a guide that describes 
when the river re reaches a certain level, it should it, this. Um, just very briefly describes some key uh, points throughout Montpelier that says this will be flooded at this level. Um, and so with the imp continued improvements to their mapping software, we're gonna have hopefully every E911 address in Montpelier will know at what level that address will, would flood. So um, some really exciting stuff that we'll hopefully be able to add to this plan within the next couple of years. Have they ever been able to explain why they use different measures at different locations? That is a really good question. Um, it, I, from the little bit that I that I know about the actual um, how that gets mm -hmm. gets measured, um, is there is a very few. Um, there's a f surprisingly few people who do the mapping for all of like the eastern seaboard of the United States. Um, and so there are different levels of measurement, I think, just because that has been historically there in the past. So it's kind of, this is where we yeah, are. Because some of them seem to be in elevation above sea level and others, you have no idea what the base of the measure is. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, that's just the case, is that this is what's been used, so that's gonna continue to be used until it gets updated. Yeah. <clears throat> The, the new one on Langdon Street has uh, mm -hmm. actual absolute sea level so elevation. The, right. Yeah, the one that. on the Winooski proper at Sedimentary Bend now has a way of uh, you, can, you can actually check the both. You can see both oh. stage and elevation. Okay. Yeah, that's a little trick that you saw. Be careful. And then you know, by Cemetery Bend will be different further up the hill. So there's a lot. There's still a lot of nuance to it. Yeah. Great, thanks for that. Appreciate it. And thanks, Evelyn. Nice to um, so questions about um, information shared, communications. Um, there's a whole section in, in the MAPLE plan dedicated to communications. Um, so what are your questions? Yeah. Uh, so just to help folks, sorry, I'm looking at pages 37 and 38, if you'll need all that is. So a list of all the tools and systems the city uses. Um, and I, I think the city has a, a somewhat impossible task of trying to understand what people are using these days. Um, I expect my children will probably never log into Facebook, for example, and with the last time we got a flood, we probably didn't have uh, flood boards for our having systems. Um, I think the side effect of that, though, is it creates a lot of different communication mechanisms. Um, it, it can be hard to know is front page in front page form authoritative? When will it come out? Um, when will something be posted to the front uh, to the Facebook page? And will Facebook let me see it? Um, sometimes, if your post is too negative, it takes two days for me to see a city post. Um, and I, I think my my ask to the city would be: um, Is is there a way? I'm not sure if it's a tool or just a, a, a technique to keep these um, on the city's website in a way that we can reference or share, right? Um, I see a lot of folks sharing the uh, Vermont State Police blog for, for criminals, right, for example. Um, it can be hard to share a VT alert with a group. It can be hard to share an email with a group. Um, I, would, I would love those. Um, the schools when they have closings, email us and call us with an auto dialer. Um, so I think you know, the, we do a great job trying to chase where people are, and I think it's an impossible task. Um, I would love for there to be something centrally that I can go back and say, oh, there's an email about this issue. Was there a follow-up, right? Um, and just think about, is is there a tool or system to let important things you know, in that single platform go out through VT alerts? Um, or even even higher, I don't think anything in here talks about, um, I'm blank, uh, are they called emergency alerts on your cell phone? Like the, VT the, alerts. Above that, though. We oh, yes. Oh. What is it? Wireless emergency alerts. Wireless emergency alerts. Um, I know on occasion when I've driven through Burlington, um, I've gotten localized alerts to roads flooding. Um, I know down here we didn't seem to have that many of those getting pushed out. I understand there's a, a fine line there. I don't want to over communicate. Um, so two thoughts would be making sure we have the level up, which is that, that geofenced mm -hmm. cell phone alert. But then also, can there be a place that we keep all the alerts, all the press releases, some way. Um, it's, it is a bit confusing to understand how you sign up for all the city alerts. Can I respond to that? 
So if you are on page 37, um, which is exactly what um, Stan was referring to, so it starts, you'll see at the very top of the page, it's not, um, it's on both pages actually, so the very top of that list is on page 36, where it says the VT alert. So this table is actually in the order of operations that the city sends out information and puts out information. So if there is a significant emergency to the point where we are sending out a VT alert, that's the first thing that we do. Um, and uh, so myself, um, Matt Wilson here is the Communications and Program Coordinator for the Community Services Department. Um, we're both members of the Crisis Communications Response Team. So each of us have a role you'll see where it says the number one and number two person in that second column. That's the person who is the primary, has that primary responsibility for putting that out. Um, and you'll see there's quite a few of us. So when I'm talking about doing this in the order of operations, it's all happening in the matter of minutes. So, um, you know, one of us is putting out the VT alert. The other person is posting it on the website. Um, and so to speak to the point about where to find the, the most accurate or the, the um, historical, like, archive of information, um, we have a communications page on our website. It's under the city manager's tab at the very top of the departments under city manager. Um, so that has a list of all, all of these items on it, um, the channels, so you can easily click to go to our Facebook, you can click on the YouTube page, all from that central page. Um, and then also on the home page of our website, just so you don't have to dig too far, um, it's, if you scroll down, there's a carousel of items, they look, look like squares with the scriptures underneath them. Um, that's called the latest news carousel. Um, so when an, an event happens, for instance, the flood, or we actually, there's a there's this tile now, we call, they're called tiles um, in uh, website speak. Um, but those, we always create one of those when there is a significant um, event happening. For instance, the July 4th celebration, that's gonna get a tile, it'll take you right there to all that information. Um, so we started keeping a log of all the weather event updates um, after this past July. So uh, you'll scroll through there, that's the, if, I, if you were to say, where do I go for the latest information, go to the latest news carousel. Um, that'll, ha that'll have what's happening when it's happening. And um, we do try to update that as often as we can. So this, this group is uh, a group of eight in the CCRT. Um, and so we are connected uh, when things are happening. And so you can also reach out to any of us to um, hopefully this, this now you have our names, um, our contact info is on the website. Uh, so definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. I think that also speaks to the community network um, conversation that's happening, um, is we wanna make sure, like we're accessible. We live in town, we're part of your community. And so we want to, this is I think a great opportunity too to put that face to the name. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, this just occurred to me as, as you were describing this. It occurred to me if we get to the point where we've got a big, uh, big emergency like the flood last year, I wonder if there's a way to just, you know, I know you're talking about the tiles and mm -hmm. blocks and everything. If there's a way at the uh, in the times of a big emergency, just essentially take over the entire city web page, mm -hmm. maybe even with different colors and everything so people can go there and they'll see oh this is this isn't There's the same thing that I go that I see every time I go there this is the big thing that's a really that's a great suggestion and I know we can customize so there's so there's certain things that we have the ability to customize on the website um, for instance that that big image that uh, crosses the entire top of the website so that would, would be a great place that anybody that goes to the home page would see that um, and as far as changing the colors I do like that kind of color coding to the different types of a, types of an event so that's something that I can reach out to our web development team to see if that's um, an option I have a question. So if, if something happens, there is an emergency and somebody, say they're out of town, they're on their way back into up here, they get one of these VT alerts. Mm -hmm. Is there a link on there that goes to the page with all the other information? There should be. So if, um, if we're one of the <coughs> ones that are putting out the VT alerts, 
it's in our it's in our plan that we have here's where you go to find more information so it's exactly for that reason okay. and another thing um, that we have learned having gone through now so many different disasters in our um, working time uh, that we want you to know that where this where that VT alert is coming from um, because uh, different municipalities um, actually you could speak to this a little bit more too but um, we are uh, this, as trained people for the city of Montpelier, we can put out VT alerts, but there's also other people in different parts of Vermont that put out VT alerts as well. Yeah. So one of the things that we wanted to make super clear is that you know if you're getting a VT alert and it's coming from the city of Montpelier, we wanna say that right up front. So ideally, every VT alert that would go out from the city would say, the city of Montpelier says, or you know, is warning you or telling you about dot, dot, dot. And then here's where you go to follow up. I'll just add yeah. one, one quick plug for VT alert. So best practices is not to put a hyperlink in the VT alert because <laughs> folks in rural areas might have limited cell coverage. So you don't want to redirect them somewhere else. You want to give them, you want to give them actionable information in the body of the VT alert, right? Here's the situation. Here's what we want you to do. You can add a hyperlink if you want to, but just make sure that you include that actual information because yeah, if you're out in Calais somewhere, you don't want people trying to load a web page to see, you know, oh my God, what's happening? And can I just ask what your name is? And uh, I'm it sounds Sid, like you're knowledgeable. Yeah, so I'm Sid Pollock. I'm, I'm you're what? Big, Sid Pollock, P O L L O C K. Yep. And I work for Vermont Emergency Management. I'm the regional coordinator to the Texas area. So, Sid, <laughs> in terms of having the, uh, the, the fencing, wireless notifications go out does the city have to apply for access to that under certain conditions or something no she she's on the list so she has access to it anytime um, the process is essentially the elected officials whether that's select board or city council signs off on a piece of paper that says here's a list of people that are authorized to send VT alerts on behalf of our municipality then we require them to take a little bit of training to go along with that just so they know how to use the system. And then once that's done, they're blessed. So um, they'll go for mobile phones, cell phones. Yeah. Yes, but it's daily bridge closed. Yeah. yeah, and it's only gonna go to folks that are signed up to receive alerts for that jurisdiction. Yeah, right? What if it was, <clears throat> can you override that and just all sell? We cannot. So yeah. at the state level, we can send out VT alerts from our side that could hit everybody in the state if we need to, right? We can draw you know, a polygon on a map or a radius, or we can send them to wherever we want to, but we limit for towns. They can only send them to you know, specific people who are signed up. But, so like I'm signed up in VTLR, I'm signed up for Washington County. So just because I live in Barrytown, I still see the VT alerts for Berlin and Montpelier. I see when she sends them out, I see them because just by virtue of the fact that I'm signed up for Washington County, I see all of them. That's actually been one of the biggest challenges that we have taken on in the city is getting people to sign up um, because that's one of the things that we hear most often is the city, the city didn't tell me. And it's like, well, have you signed up for the alert? Um, so we can't tell you until you sign up. Unfortunately, that's the, that's the way it, it does take that little bit of effort. Um, and so by, you know, raising awareness and talking about it and we're, we're, we're doing everything basically every piece of city communication that goes out now says and by the way have you signed up for VT alerts? Um, yeah. Tell them when they vote. We sure will. Yeah. I think you guys put it in the water bill right? We did put it in yeah. the water bill. <laughs> I'm trying to get Green Mountain Power to do that nice. in all of the power bills. It's a big push. I think Mary's, did you have a question? I, I was, thank you. Um, this, I do not need a response this second. It's just something for you to put in the back of your mind. This is obviously an enormous amount of work you put into it. And you can see the thoughtfulness that everyone brought to. Um, there are people with all the best intentions who are not going to read all of it. But you've done your part. The other thing I'm thinking of is waste. You know, you're trying to create a climate of readiness for things, anything. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that down the road you can begin presenting this in terms of scenarios like video commercials or whatever? Yeah. Um, 
from the point of view of the homeowner or the person at the festival or the, or the volunteer. This is the situation. Oh, now I know what I'm going to do. And by the way, did I sign up for? Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's a great thought. And um, and just also like nothing. We don't have to have responses to everything. So I appreciate right, no, that. You could have every scenario in the yeah. world, but you would be creating what you've done this work on is getting people. Ready. And, and I also wanted to mention that um, we are going to do some trainings. Um, the consultants are going to do some training. So for those the folks who might not necessarily read through the whole thing to go to a training to to think about the steps that they need to do to check things to off to, yeah. their list. Sometimes yeah. you have to be people have absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, Ned. I got pigeonholed before I showed up by a friend. And she said, well, what about if the electricity is down and the communications are down? Mm -hmm. How are we getting the word out? Mm -hmm. Just to put that out as, a, mm -hmm. as something we can follow up on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciate that. And um, that ties well with Mary's comment of like creating a culture of preparedness, um, I think, would, would help with that as well. This may be redundant from what Mary said, but this is clear on the communication side of when there's an emergency. But when we hear about resiliency in community, it's about more frequent communication and bringing, is, does that belong in one of the other categories of the commission? This, we're here tonight about the preparedness. Maybe it's in the regional planning, that, mm -hmm. that level of communication. So just that note that that's important ahead of time so that mm -hmm. we're kind of in the habit of communicating. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and, and that you, you may have noticed too in the plan, it talks about what you can do in blue sky days. And, and I think that's a piece of it too is, is, you know, sign up for the alerts and practice that communication, go to the, the website and, um, and the trainings and, you know, have your checklist ready. Um, and it's a lot, like in it, as Ben mentioned, it's, um, as John mentioned, it's a lot to ask of the community, but it's we are all a part of a part of this as well. Yeah. So just a, a quick comment to his point about what are we going to do with the powers out? So you do have the physical posting locations. It's only a requirement that you have three. You have three, but you could. I mean, you could expand that list and include. You any sort of community, you know, you're talking about that neighborhood plan, maybe have mm -hmm. one place in the neighborhood where, you know, mm -hmm. folks know this is where important information is going to be pushed out. Is there a reason the hub isn't included in that list? In the list of um, physical locations? It seemed like an obvious. Mm -hmm. During the flood, the most, I think the most mm -hmm. congregation was right there, right? There's yeah. a lot of very mm -hmm. big informational signs. I think it's just because it's its own it's its own bucket down below. That's why it's not, but that's, we could definitely put it up there for a redundancy. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It also strikes me that communication is two-way. And yes. so when people have needs or they're concerned or they're wondering, there's an information clarification, information <clears throat> help request, all these things happen. It strikes me that there's a lot of work there, but they're, they're on the on the city page or someplace. There must be a place where people can log in and say, "What? What's happening? I didn't get it. You know, help me. You know, or I, I need help getting out of here or whatever." Yeah. Um, and um, somebody's got to be able to pick up on that at the hub or as a volunteer or somehow. But there's got to be a, a way to log those things. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Follow up on it, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be to a good extension of um, the members of the CCRT, and just uh, because it's not explicit in the plan, we could spell that out and say, reach out to these people. Um, and think specifically the reason we have a, such a diverse group of us is because we each have expertise in our own departments. Like um, our person from the clerk's office um, has that. Uh, you know, connection to elections and other sorts of um, municipal um, dealings. 
Um, our DPW person would be you know, our, our key go-to for infrastructure questions. Um, so yeah, really having that, I think having that explicit in there really would then draw the attention to this is like, these are the people, actual people that you can call or email. And we will get back to you. I have one other. I want to underscore this, the tab, the 211 line where people call up to request help. That doesn't mean you get help. They don't tell you. They don't tell you. They, they're not prepared to do that. But the, the, the information goes out. But it doesn't mean that the select board or public service or the police or anybody is going to follow up. But, and I mean, it's not that they don't warn you. It's that they, if you put a request in, you may not hear back if you would. You're not going to get help, right? They don't tell you. Which I think is the, the hard part of that process. Yeah, so so it, it, we've got to have a way in which please log what's going on. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to you as we can. Patience. But anyway, I'm just saying that there's, it's hard. But mm -hmm. there's got to be some way that there's a readiness to pass it on to the hub or to the follow up. I will say that Alec went out. Uh, Alec and the parts where I'm running the hub last two years ago now. Um, if you filled out the form on the website, it was very promptly attended to. Um, I recall being in a basement asking for help and getting that help within 20 minutes. It was really, you know, that kind of <laughs> response is incredible. It makes you trust the system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I see, uh, actually, I got a call. Um, Linda is online. Linda, um, you want to unmute and speak somehow? <laughs> Um, actually, that, I got, that won't become, I, I don't have any right, way to gonna, amplify someone's I'm going to see if I can, like, Linda, can I, can you talk? Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Linda, you may, you'll need to translate for the room. Yeah, yeah that, this isn't going to really get picked up on the camera. We, we just were under the understanding that it was just going to be text questions. That's why I didn't yeah. have that. Okay. Yeah. Probably better to go to text than to Sorry. Okay. That looks like it. <laughs> Sid, is, is your group responsible for flaw alerts? Do you run it in LA? Well, I'm not the administrator, but I, I work with so it. Your department? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, VEM oversees the program. I, I realize it's a, it's a third party application that you don't have control for all of them into it. Um, if your group was ever looking at you know, ways to improve that, I know you have to be sign up with a number of folks, it's a little onerous. And it would be it would be nice if, if the sign up process was as simple as possible. Um, for example, on an iPhone, most websites you just log in with your Apple account now. Mm -hmm. Right? So zero sign up. My phone knows where I am. Right, so if I'm sitting here, it should know I should why I want localized alerts. Right, if I if I'm up in Burlington, it should know that as well. Yeah, and I know VQ alerts is the Vent Bridge isn't really built for that. Um, but I think the the current 15% sign up rate in Vermont suggests that there might be a need to kind of simplify work with a Vent Bridge or another Vent Bridge. Like, how does it make a one step login that I don't need to kind of pick and choose what things are important to me? Um, if I respond to or open up like a, a road alert, keep setting it up. If I don't ever open them, stop setting me like road closure alerts. Everyone should probably get flood alerts, right? How can you make that experience? Well, everybody is going to get the flood alerts. Well, so 15% of Vermonters get it. They well, up. if it's something that's pushed out through the National Weather Service, that's going to be a wireless emergency alert. You're going to see that whether you want it. Well, there is a way to turn them off on your phone, but most people don't know how to do that for a reason. Um, but if it's a flash flood warning or something from the National sure. Weather Service, that's going to supersede VT alert. Um, but no, I agree. Yeah, that 15% isn't great. And yeah, that sign up process I, is, I would could be straight line. You know, what is the kind of the one click process for me to be able to deal? It's a big challenge, right? But how could you make it so someone installs the app and that's almost enough? I think what what we would be worried about is people, if we give them a default that you're going to get every alert, yeah. they're just going to uninstall the app. Yeah. They're not going to go through the steps to say, I only want to see these certain things, and maybe they'll just get frustrated and delete the sure. app. Sure. Um, but no, it's definitely feedback I can bring 
But they, you can also track, again, you, you could, if I don't ever click that, you, you send me an alert for a, a road being closed, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't open it, they, they can know that and they can stop sending me those, for example, right? It could be a little tailored to the individual based on what they click on. Um, but you know, again, yeah. the idea of, of make it, it's really hard to explain to some populations the kind of the, the grid of all the options and how to sign up for it. How can yeah. you take that, you know, my, my nine-year-old get her to sign up for it or my grandmother the same kind of pattern. If it's just install the app and that's it, how close could we get to a, a reasonable system? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll bring back the feedback. I, I talk to the administrator like every day. So. And let's hear from, is, has Linda yeah, taken yeah. here? Comments from Linda. Okay. So Linda uh, wrote, I want to reiterate the question about what happens if power or cell service goes down. We should be prepared for that. We were very lucky in 2023, but North Carolina showed us what happens if we're not that lucky. I also wanted to join the other person who pointed out that Facebook has increasingly limited reach. It worked great for me in 2023, but I'm aware fewer and fewer people are still active there. Putting some kind of banner on the city website would be excellent. I was looking for something like that in January, in July 2024, and felt like it was I wasn't seeing it. In July 2024, there was no middle of the night communication from the city. <laughs> Many of us were up all night keeping an eye on conditions and were looking for updates from the city, but we didn't find it. We learned later the city had been working, uh, working it all night, but we didn't know that. Uh, I can I just respond to that real briefly. So um, our house, my, my husband's in my house was actually destroyed in the flood. Um, so that's why I wasn't personally sending out notifications at two in the morning. Um, but we did, I was um, in communications with our team all night. And the reason we did not send out um, as many as we did in before is because we really didn't have the need in, in Montpelier. Um, so we like, for instance, we did not see the inundation flooding that we saw the year, the year before. Um, so that uh, it does, I just wanted to, just to mention that just briefly to explain like why um, the, the, for the, for instance, for the frequency of events, like, um, and like, like Sid says too, the, it, it's a very fine line to establish between sending, you know, continuous updates or too many and then not enough. Um, and so we did hear that as feedback from the 2023 flooding event that people were getting too, we were sending, the city was sending too many BT alerts and so they were just ignoring them. And then we, in this, at the same moment, we had people saying that they didn't hear anything from the city. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredibly difficult line to, to balance. Um, and that's why we, we stress, um, you know, if you wanna get updated, please sign up for BT alerts. Um, and especially because it, um, it can call a landline. So even if you don't have an, uh, a, a cell phone or internet access, it'll still call your landline telephone. Which is pretty great. It's just, just one thing, and to go back to another topic, um, people who see those scenarios as videos also might be drawing back to looking through this, even though they might have felt overwhelmed by, by first, yeah. at first. Yep. Linda, Linda followed up saying, just letting everybody know we weren't seeing inundation flooding would have been a relief. And I didn't mean BT alert rather than just something on a website or Facebook. Um, and sorry to hear about your house. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, so timing, I think that's a good point of like the question around timing and what strikes the, the right balance. Um, and it's not something we have in the plan, but it's something that we could incorporate um, as well. Um, we just moving away maybe from um, VT alerts and thinking about what are some other questions um, around communications. Um, the on page twenty five there are some some bullet points of of the um, what's what are the responsibilities under this plan of the CCRT um, and curious if anyone has any questions around that um, those those bullet points um, page, 25. page 25 so there um, 
The bullet points are ensuring timely and succinct emergency response and recovery information um, is disseminated to the public through official city channels during blue sky time, so to, to the point of um, preparedness, um, proceeding and during emergencies that affect the city, coordinating with city partners on sector-specific messaging, managing media requests, and monitoring communication channels for misinformation, and subsequently addressing misinformation when needed. So I'm curious, um, are there thoughts, ideas of um, maybe what's missing from that? What um, doesn't feel like it fits? <laughs> Ned. There's a lot. <laughs> we still have a lot of work to do on this, I think. But you know, one of the key things is, you know, which roads are closed? How do we get from here to there? You know, should we be going to the odd, or is that just crazy? Right? I mean, we, we probably should. Um, we need to have good information and good directions, and this is working and this isn't. And I can't get there. How do I? How can I get a ride? You know, I mean, there's all sorts of nuance to this that we need to build into the back end of it. Where you know, uh, one of the things, beautiful things about the hub was you'd show up and there were gloves, and masks, and sanitizer, and, and uh, just. There you go, you're ready to go. But look, and, and then later, more and more stuff showed up. And, and that that's really helped from information, too, because a lot of people didn't wander by. You know, mm -hmm. But to know that there was supplies and there's support and there's dehumidifiers coming and fans and pumps and all that stuff is a communications issue. Mm -hmm. Somehow. Mm -hmm. Ned, you've mentioned roads being closed. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's in here someplace. Um, someone somewhere in the city or elsewhere, I don't know where, does something to mark roads as closed that like Google Maps picks up mm -hmm. and was done really well last flood. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how that happens or if it's a city responsibility, but I didn't see it in here anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as more and more folks are using like cars with GPS or have a phone, um, that for me was how I get supplies to bury through you know, the network of back roads to spot failure. Um, so maintaining that was really well done. I don't know who to thank for that, um, but it needs to be also maintained. Mm -hmm. Is that a city mm -hmm. thing or is that? Mm -hmm. I, I can respond a little Great. bit to that. So if it's a state road, yeah. that falls under VTrans. They keep track of all that and they'll, they'll send those alerts out to Waze, which I believe Waze backfills Google Maps because it's all one company. Um, but what we did during the eclipse is because we knew that a lot of local routes were going to need to be closed, um, we found that Waze will actually allow, kind of similar to VT Alert, you can assign somebody from your municipality access to like a Waze admin account where they can mark those local roads as being closed uh, within Waze, which was very helpful to, during the eclipse because right, we, didn't have, we didn't want people taking certain dirt roads. <laughs> Um, that have never been there before, and yeah. so we pushed that really hard, and it was, it takes a little while, I will say it does take a little while to get that access from Waze, um, but do you guys have somebody assigned? We, so I know the, the police department is primary, like, police department and public works in tandem okay. are, um, are the, yeah, the primary people that, that monitor traffic congestion and okay. things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. might be worth noting that you can, yeah. you can create a municipal Waze account. And there was yeah. five one ones updated as well. Not, again, I'm not sure yeah. what that backfills from. Yeah, yeah D-Trans yeah. data. It, it happened. However, it happened. It was really well done. Awesome. I think in the category of misinformation, misinformation can also mm -hmm. happen without the intent of misinformation. Hi, John. Are we giving you like a three minute warning? Okay. Thank um, you. Oh shoot! I'll talk fast so I don't have the last word. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> misinformation can happen without the intent of misinformation. My, my career is built on helping technical people talk to non-technical audiences because that breaks down all the time. And in these scenarios, we have any number of technical experts trying to communicate to a broad public audience. Um, and through, through well-meaning and, and good intentions, things can still go awry because acronyms inevitably find their way into it. Hints at locations that they know about, but they're, you know, 
words like breach sneak in when the dam was not breaching, it was doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Clarity of language is going to has mattered and is going to continue to matter tremendously. And I think I'm going to be keep pushing for that as a member of the commission. Um, but I, I think in the as part of the workshops that we do, just kind of hammering that home for all involved. Who's getting this? And are they real? Is the language I'm using crystal clear to people who don't sit next to me in my department or in my whatever? And that's hard. It, it, ta it, it takes concentration and thought on the people, on the part of the people sending out the word, as you all well know. Um, and so, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and and um, do are there any other any questions before, um, unless it's a question from somebody on the Zoom? No. Um, before I hand it to Ned, any other questions? No. Okay, Ned. Just also thinking about radio. You know, the old like schools out kind of thing. You mm -hmm. know, and even though VPR is not going to tell you much. Our radio stations, if there's a normal contact thing, basically say tune into your local website for East Towns. Many towns won't have mm -hmm. that, but Montpelier could have that. Mm -hmm. Are there any towns in, that have local radio stations that just read text? That's not that I'm aware of now. That's a good point. Yeah. But in Central Vermont, WDEV is really very. Yeah, they're fantastic. People rely on them a lot. Yeah, we send them all our press releases, and they're um, they're very good about uh, following up, especially if it's an urgent thing. Like I'll just call sometimes the station and say, you know, there's a, there's a if it's an emergency type situation, they pick it up right away. Mm -hmm. um, but even just to plug like story time with the police department or things like that, um, there and this event, um, that's uh, it. it one of the nice parts about being like a small town in central Vermont is you can actually have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your local DJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Calling in for a request. The other thing I would ask about is, does the city have an articulated communications plan with the school districts, U32 as well as Montpelier? Yeah, so we, we do. We are uh, part of the, the standing up of the CCRT was to create a connection with the school district. So we do all of our press releases and, and emergency information goes out to a, the consortium of um, school administrators who then branch it off to everybody in their um, networks. And uh, we actually, um, along with uh, Mayor McCullough and uh, City Manager Frazier, um, we been working on just just reestablishing more of a um, uh, like month to month check in of you know what's going on events and how can we coordinate better and um, be better community partners with each other. So um, yeah, it's been great to uh, to to be part of part of that as well. Thank you. Well, I believe we need to wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, between Paul and I jotting notes down, I feel like we've gotten a, a great amount of feedback and just appreciate your, your thoughts and um, attention to this. And we're going to head back into the auditorium for our final closing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> one, one, no, I saw a light.